سلام عزیزان به برنامه من بیدار خوش اومدید امروز برنامه خاصی داریم چرا؟ چون مهمون خاصی داریم مهمونی که با کلام خدا با کتاب مقدس آشناس کتاب های زیادی راجع به نبوت ها نوشته با نبوت های کتاب مقدس آشناس انواع اقسام کتاب نوشته یک خبره است در وقایه کتاب مقدس و آنچه که اتفاق میفته اتفاقاتی که امروز داره میفته اتفاقاتی که در ایران افتاده داره میفته و خواهد افتاد اتفاقاتی که در خاورمیانه برای اسرائیل برای فلسطین افتاده میفته و خواهد افتاد همه اینها رو به کتاب مقدس ایشون رب میده و مهمتر از همه که ازشون سال خواهم کرد آینده ایران در این جنگ هستش با دوست عزیزمون آقای بیل سالس آشنا بشید ایشون سخنگو هستن در سراسر آمریکا شناخته شده هستن در سراسر جهان شناخته شده هستن uh, I just introduce you briefly uh, welcome thank you, for... thank you it's good yes. to see you again it's good, it's good to have you uh, you wrote a book I'm going to show the clip okay Uh, more than a month before all these conflicts that, uh, in Israel and yes. Hamas and Palestine happen. And you speak about these, these events there. I do. The book <laughs> is dealing with the wars yeah. in the future according to the Bible. Yeah. And a lot of those wars are dealing with Israel and the Middle East. Uh, Iran is involved in yeah. a prophecy. The Hamas, Hezbollah, uh, Iranian proxies, Syria. Uh, so I get into those wars, and it turns out now we're seeing things happen in the Middle East that are coming to life. It seems like the Bible spoke about these things. Yes, it looks like a lot of confusion, a lot of uncertainty, things as if it's happening randomly. But when you look at it from God's point of view, everything is under his control, right? I mean, yes. it's according to the prophecies. God is not surprised. God didn't wake up on <laughs> Saturday and right. say, oh, what happened today? You know? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He knows the end from the beginning. That's right. And he gives us the information that we need to know because he loves us. Yes. He wants us to prepare for what's coming. And it, uh, th- uh, it shows us that he's God, that he can do that. I, mean, I want to show the clip uh, about your book. Uh, this book was written as a kitab hafta ha qabl az un ke etfaqat israel o felestin biyofte neveshte shode va imruz rajbe un ham sohbat mikonim. In clip o neshun bedim barmigardim. In the last days humankind will dwell in a war-torn world. Ancient biblical prophecies predict devastating regional conflicts in the Middle East as well as world wars spanning the globe. Conventional battles, nuclear exchanges, and supernatural demonic invasions are coming. Billions will die. Famines, pestilences, and scarcities will plague the planet. As a result of these future wars, humankind will clamor for a leader who can restore order out of the chaos. The Bible calls him Antichrist. The Future War Prophecies book locates the battlefields, identifies the participants, explains the motives, provides the details, and explores the outcomes of these coming world-changing conflicts, which include the war fought between Israel and Iran, including its proxies of Syria, Hezbollah, and Hamas, the destruction of Damascus, the final war that ends the Arab-Israeli conflict, the invasion of Israel for plunder and booty by Russia, Turkey, Iran, and their nine-member coalition, the two Christian-killing crusades of the tribulation period, the demonic invasion that torments unsaved people for five months, the 200 million demonic army that kills one-third of humankind, the war in heaven between Michael the Archangel versus Satan, the battle of Armageddon between Jesus Christ versus Antichrist, the final Gog of Magog war at the end of the millennium. These wars and more are covered in this revealing book and DVD. Don't be caught in the crossfire. Discover what wars are coming so that you can keep yourself and your loved ones out of harm's way. در کتاب مقدس هزاران هزار پیشگویی نوشته شده که خیلی هاش انجام شده و چند تاییش مونده تو اون هزارانش انجام شده میدونیم که این چند تا هم خواهد شد و بعضی از این نبوت ها راجب ایران هم هستش Would you review the main prophecies of Ezekiel 38, Jeremiah 49 and then I want to ask you how does it relate to current events? Yes, absolutely. Uh, 
Iran is the subject of two prophecies in the last days. One of them is in the book of Jeremiah, and one of them is in the book of Ezekiel. They're two distinctly different prophecies. Uh, the one that I'm watching very closely right now that I think could happen, maybe even happen as we're watching things unfold in the Middle East at the present time, is in Jeremiah chapter 49, dealing with the ancient territory of Elam. Now, the Elam, when you look at a modern-day map of Iran, Elam is by the Persian Gulf, and then Persia, and which was, became Iran in 1935, is the main part of Iran. But there are two prophecies. One is about Elam, one is about Persia. Persia is in Ezekiel 38. Elam is in Jeremiah chapter 49. The Elam prophecy of Hormoz is what I'm concerned about. It talks about a time when God of the Bible is going to be fiercely angry with Iran because they, we're told they have bad leadership that wants to launch something lethal somewhere. And we know that because as he says he's going to destroy the kings and the princes from there. And he's going to break the bow at the foremost of their might. And I think we could be talking about that's where all the missile silos are, the underground missile silos in that west yes, side of Iran, yeah. the underground air base. There's a nuclear reactor there, the Bashar nuclear reactor. There's portable rocket launchers, missile defense systems. And there's concerns Israel might have to go take out the nuclear reactors and things inside of Iran where Persia is, Fordo, Natanz, et cetera. And it's concerned they've got to go through that area and they might have to destroy all that stuff. That could be, it says it'll be a disaster that happens because of the Lord's fierce anger at that time. Right. So you think that's near with all the events in the Middle East right now and uh, Israel, Palestine, Hamas, and now uh, Lebanon, maybe Syria. But uh, uh, one thing is clear, Iran has a hand in that. And he's supporting the weapons and the, and the finances to do that. Do you think that's enough for Israel to attack Iran? Well, Israel was preparing to attack Iran anyways. Uh, in May of 2022, they did a major military drill called the Chariots of Fire, where they planned to att attack Iran's nuclear sites. Uh, they also prepared for retaliation from Iran with Hezbollah, Hamas, Syria, uh, and other proxies of Iran and they were also preparing for many casualties inside of Israel. We're already watching many casualties are happening from Hamas inside of Israel already. And Hezbollah would cause more casualties because they've got 150,000 missiles, much more powerful than Hamas. So Israel is very much ready for war. They might have to, they might have to attack Iran to defend themselves. I'm watching that closely. So this, uh what, how do you see the future of this war? Is it going to expand? Are there other nations going to get involved? Um, uh, are they going to be for Israel, against Israel? How does this, uh, what's happening today, relate to Ezekiel 38? Yeah, as we sit here right now, we will have to sort of look forward as what could happen. Uh, things, if things start to escalate, and I think they probably will, I think this is actually the stuff that the Bible spoke about, not just another confrontation with Hamas and Israel. I think Iran is behind it. I think they've got a strategy put together. Hamas starts bombing Israel and what they did. Hezbollah gets involved. Israel has already got troops already, tens of thousands of troops at the northern border where Lebanon is and Hezbollah. Syria's used chemical weapons in the revolution over 300 times. Chemical weapons could come at Israel. If, if Syria gets involved, and I think Syria would get involved. Syria is already starting to lob some missiles. And then I think Iran gets drawn in, too. Iran has hypersonic intercontinental ballistic missiles that can hit Israel in 6.66 minutes. So this is a big threat to Israel right now. And existence of Israel is at jeopardy right now. So uh, we see in Iran, uh, not, but to help us understand, the government of Iran is against Israel. They're not shy about it. They want to wipe Israel off the map. They, they are uh, producing, uh, developing nuclear bomb. We don't know how far uh, they are from it. Maybe they have it, and they're they're looking for an excuse, maybe mm -hmm. to to use it. Mm -hmm. Maybe this will be an excuse in a war. What do you think about that? Yeah. Well, first of all, in the war, if it escalates and it will come to a final war, the prophecies talk about that. The question is, is that happening right now? Is that going to happen right now? Yeah. Um, but it will happen. 
And we, we need to remember that the prophecy says that the reason it happens is the Lord is fiercely angry with Iran. That's part of the prophecy in Jeremiah chapter 49. Why is the Lord fiercely angry? Okay, let's talk about a few reasons, right, okay? First of all, God has plans for Israel. We're told that in Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 7, He's going to put the world on notice that He's the, the God of the Bible. He's the one true God. He says, I'll make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. That's one Iran wants to wipe Israel off the map. That would make God not be able to fulfill that promise, that prophecy. The other one is God is going into Iran right now and he's, evan he's doing supernatural things, dreams, visions, miracles, and healings. And many people, many Iranians are converting out of Islam into Christianity, which you're very familiar with, with yeah. your ministry. The other thing I think he's upset with Iran is first language. They're so inhumane to their people. You know, right. we, we know the protests that have been going on and things like that. And lastly, they're worshiping the wrong God. God of the Bible is a jealous God. He is the one true God, not Allah, but God of the Bible. Amen. Now, with all the things happening uh, right now, uh, and Israel being such a s kind of superpower in terms of military, uh, do you think it can defend itself or it's going to be defenseless and we go to Ezekiel 38, the Lord steps in? Well, I believe there's certain things that happen before we get to Ezekiel 38. Yeah. Uh, Ezekiel 38 has some preconditions that have to be fulfilled. Israel has to be dwelling securely in the land without walls, bars, or gates in receipt of great prosperity because Russia is coming together with Turkey and Iran, Persia, and a coalition of nine members to invade Israel for that plunder and that booty. But Israel is not dwelling securely presently. Okay. They have walls. They have a 403-mile wall in the middle of Israel, some points 20 feet high, filled with concrete. They had walls around the Gaza that the Hamas just penetrated through. They've got walls by Jordan. They've got two walls up between Lebanon and, you know, the Hezbollah are. They've got walls down by the Sinai Peninsula. They're the most walled-in country in the world. They, and they don't dwell securely because you see what's going on with Hamas. You see the Arab countries around them, the terrorist proxies of Hezbollah. Syria is still at war with Israel. So they've got to deal with that problem right now before they can dwell securely and tear down the walls. Now, Israel will win those wars because the Israeli defense forces exist in Bible prophecy to win wars. They will actually, one of the things we need to watch, Hormoz, because Syria is a proxy of Iran, Isaiah 17 talks about a prophecy dealing with Damascus, the capital of Syria. It says in Isaiah 17, 1, that Damascus will cease from being a city. It will be a ruinous heap. It will no longer be a city. This is a oldest continuously inhabited city in recorded history. It's the capital of Syria. It's going to be cease to exist. Isaiah 17.9 tells us that the desolation is caused by the children of Israel, by the Israeli defense forces. So they're going to take out Damascus. It's Isaiah 17 verse 14, the last verse of Isaiah 17 says, one morning you see Damascus, but in the morning he is no more. This is the portion of those who rob us and plunder us, meaning in self-defense. Israel has to take out the city. So they get engaged, in my estimation, in this massive war with Iran, Syria, Hezbollah, Hamas, and they're now in a war where they have to take out a city to make a statement. And when that happens, I believe the other Arab countries, Be you know, Lebanon with Beirut, uh, Amman, Jordan, Cairo and Egypt, Mecca and Saudi Arabia, they're concerned about their cities. Because uh, if a city goes overnight, goes destroyed overnight, Israel has that technology. A nuclear weapon launched at the right altitude can take out a city and not cause all the contamination because Damascus is pretty close to Tel Aviv. They can, can do that, take out a city, and still not have that contamination come into their country with the wind patterns and things like that. We also find out in Jeremiah chapter 49 too that Amman, Jordan gets, becomes a desolate mound too. It says, Jeremiah chapter 49 verse 2, I will cause an alarm of war in Rabah of the Ammonites. That would be Ammon, Jordan, the capital. Amman, Jordan, of, of Jordan. It shall be a desolate mound. Like Damascus will cease from being a city. The capital of Jordan will be a desolate mound. And Israel will take possession of his inheritance. That is part of the promised land that God gave to Abraham between the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates, probably the Nile to the Euphrates. That's called the promised land in Genesis chapter 15, verse 18. 
Israel does not want to go to war, but it will go to war. Now, Jordan and Israel have a fragile peace treaty right now from 1994, but that peace treaty will be voided out and they'll be in a war because Jordan will also be involved in a war coming against Israel. And I think all this is described in a prophecy called Psalm 83 in the Bible, in the mm -hmm. Psalms, Psalm 83. It has Lebanon, Gaza, uh, Jordan, Syria, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, the Palestinians, Iraq. All these countries are involved in that Psalm 83. And also some of them are Iran's proxies. And also these are the countries that came to war with Israel in 1948. But it did not fulfill the full prophecy. So we're watching for the Elam prophecy in Jeremiah chapter 49, leading to probably a proxy war, maybe the destruction of Damascus in Isaiah 17, as Israel has to fight off the proxies. The other Arab countries getting concerned. They saw that Damascus get destroyed recently. Syria became another a member of the Arab League again. They were kicked out during the revolution, but now they're back in the Arab League. The other Arab countries are going to be concerned, and I think you could have the Psalm 83. So we're talking about three or four prophecies that could happen in sequence that will change the whole face of the Middle East and affect the whole world, and especially affect Iranians. We're very concerned because... But we have good news for Iranians, too, though. Before we, <laughs> before we close, we want to talk about that, too. But we're talking more, and you saw my video, a massive war in the Middle East. And that, I think that's we're starting to see it unfold right now. Yeah. So let me uh, make sure I understand. Because the Ezekiel 38 happens when Israel is secure, and it's not secure now. So is it correct to deduct that this war is going to go away, Israel going to win, mm -hmm. it's going to be even more secure, it's going to wipe uh, the enemies, Palestinians, Hamas, and everything. Mm -hmm. So is, are we going in that direction that Israel going to win this war and bring prosperity, peace to their nation, and then Ezekiel 38 is, will happen, or this war will end with Ezekiel 38? No, exactly. Certain things have to happen. Israel will win a war and they will be able to dwell securely and tear down the walls. And then Ezekiel 38 will happen. But in the midst of the war, Israel will suffer some casualties as we're already seeing happen right yeah. now. It's also in Isaiah chapter 17, verses 4 through 6. So Israel does not go without getting hit hard in that major war. But they will win. and Because and, God is going gonna, is gonna to uphold His holy name in the midst of His people Israel. They're going to tear down the walls. They're going to, more Jews will come back into Israel. They'll rebuild. They'll get plunder and booty from the war. And they have their own resources. They're exporting oil now to the Europe. I mean, a natural gas to Europe. They're already starting to do that right now in the midst of this war. They're starting to do that right now. So they're going to be very wealthy after they go through this war. But it will take some time. But Ezekiel 38 will then happen. What's very amazing about Ezekiel 38 is God will stop that. Because that's too big. Russia, Turkey, Iran, okay. nine members. If that happened today, that's almost two and a half million troops coming against Israel that has about 176,000 troops. Israel can't fight that war. They can fight this war that we're watching, and they will win the war that's coming together in those other prophecies. Right. But God has to stop that Ezekiel 38, and he will. There'll be a great earthquake. These countries that speak different languages, they're going to start, it says every man's sword will be against his brother. They will start killing right. each other. There will be, then be flooding rains, hailstone, fire, brimstone. God is going to use his arsenal. He's going to stop it supernaturally. The world is going to watch that. They're going to go, wow, that was not a normal war. Yeah. That was the God of the, the Bible. Just stop that. Very good. And, that. and that's when he's going to say, I will make my holy name known. He's going to let the world know he's a holy God. Yeah in the midst of his people Israel, and it will not be profaned anymore. Right. right. Um, the government of Iran is not very stable. It's going down. It could have gone down last year with the protests and everything. And no, not many people predict that it's going to last long. But then you look at the prophecies, it's the Islamic government looks like is the one who will attack Israel. So if the Iranian government implodes and changes, very likely that the next government it will not be against Israel, maybe even friends of Israel. Uh, well, how do you see that? So uh, let me put it this way. So according to prophecies, should, can we uh, dedu deduct that, uh, deduce that um, this government is going to stay? Well, the right? two prophecies with Iran, Jeremiah 49 we talked about, Elam territory, Ezekiel 38, Persia, they're both going against Israel. 
Yeah, I mean, it looks like the Elam prophecy would involve Israel because it talks about the enemies of Elam. And right now we know Israel and Iran are going at it. Uh, but then they also get involved in a war with Russia to come against Israel. So I would not be surprised if this bad leadership stays throughout both those wars. Right. But at some point in time, there will be a good leader again. We're told in the end of the Jeremiah chapter 49, the good news right. is that God will set his throne in Elam. And that's a big deal. I mean, you know, the throne of God in Elam, it's going to be in Jerusalem when Jesus returns in the second coming. Right. We're told it will be in Jerusalem. But what is that about? It's the same word for the throne in Jerusalem, the same word for the throne in Elam. Yeah. And then it also says the Lord will restore the fortunes of That's the right. people in Elam, because what happens when the disaster happens in Elam, the west coast of Iran, there'll be a dispersion. It says when the disaster happens, all the Elamite, the Iranians in that area, will go into the nations of the world to disperse. It sounds like a humanitarian crisis. Right. And maybe a nuclear scenario. Right. And, but then he says, but I will restore the fortunes. He will bring them back. Now, if someone in Iran believes in Jesus right now, they're a Christian. We have what's called the rapture, where Jesus is going to come and take the church, the people who believe in him, up to be with him together and avoid the bad time of the judgments yeah. of the tribulation period. And those people will not go. I mean, if this happens, if the rapture happens before these wars, yeah. great news, you know, then Praise they don't God. go through it. But the ones who do have to go through the tribulation period who get dispersed, yeah. the good news is if they do get to know the Lord, and many will come to know the Lord, right. Iran will have a remnant. They will be brought back into this area. They'll be restored to their fortunes. That is great news. Yes, but the I'm problem right. is that's, we got this to look at right now, these wars. That's the main problem. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We are almost at the end of yeah. our, our program. Um, I may I ask you to speak to our viewers. Look at the camera. Mm -hmm. Speak to those who don't know Jesus. How does this prophecy apply to them? And then speak to the church Christians. Uh, how do you apply these prophecies to them? what they need to feel, do uh, today and think, you know, what is it uh, for them today? What, what do they need to do? Well, we need to, we need to recognize that God gave us this information because he loves us and he wants us to know what's coming and powerful things are going to happen. And we should worship and thank God for this information. He didn't give it to us to impress us, but to inform us. Uh, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago to die for the sins of everybody. John 3.16 says God so loved the whole world that he sent his only son, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus gave his life. He, went in the, he was buried in the ground for three days, and he rose again, meaning he can give us ever, everlasting life. He knows the route to heaven. And he says in John 14, 6, I am the way to heaven. I'm the way, the, the truth and the life. And nobody gets to the heavenly Father, the God of the Bible, but through him. And Jesus Christ presently is actually God of the miracles inside of Iran. You can hear these stories through Hormoz's ministry at this point in time. Dreams, visions, miracles, and he healings. I've had the fortunate opportunity of hearing testimonies from some of these Iranians who have committed their lives to Jesus Christ at this point in time and they are on they were dead in Islam but they're alive in Christ right now so I urge you people you Iranians there to understand that Jesus Christ is the way the truth and the life and the Iranian leadership right now is leading you down leading the nation down the wrong path pathway of war and it's going to be devastating but Jesus Christ is there for you guys he's actually doing supernatural evangelism inside of Iran where it's very difficult for even Christian missionaries to get inside of so I would urge you to look into the Bible, look into Jesus Christ, and He is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, I want to wrap it up. Kitab Mokaddas, Puraz Nabu Vatost. Va Chodai Maruhi, Ham Chubashu Migi Ham Badosh. Oyan de Iran, Ham Dardo Ranges Yodiro, Kitab Mokaddas, Pishkui Mikor, Vali Ocharish Migi Ke, Man Iran of Arikat Raham Dad. ایران با خدای عشق و محبت آشنا خواهد شد میگه تمام اون سرمایه ها تمام اون برکات رو به ایران برخواهم کرد بعد خودش میگه من خودم این قوت ها قدرت هایی که مردم ایران رو در اسارت خودش گرفته من خودم نابود میکنم و در نهایت خدا میگه 
خدای عشق و محبت بر ایران حکومت خواهد کرد الان همه نبوت های خدا انجام شده اینم انجام خواهد شد دیگه این دیگه شاید و باید نداره انجام خواهد شد مهم اینه که تو کجایی باور میکنی خدا پروندش خیلی قویه هر چی گفته انجام شده آیا قلب و زندگی تو به خداوند میسپری تا دیر نشده تو به زودی جنگی در ایران خواهد بود اونایی که به عیسی مسیح ایمان آوردید الان وقت بیداریه وقت کمه ما باید فعال باشیم باید پیغام مسیح رو برسونیم باید مردم رو محبت کنیم اتفاقاتی داره میفته و این اتفاقات میتونه جهان رو عوض بکنه زندگی معمولی همینطوری ادامه نداره دنیا داره عوض میشه دنیا داره به سوی جنگ و نابودی پیش میره و الان وقتشه که ما مسیحان به جنگ بترسیم گیج باشیم کلام خدا رو بدونیم و با اراده خدا همسو باشیم چون وقتی با خدا همسو هستی تو بدترین شرایط تو پیروزی تو بدبخترین ملت ها تو خوشبختی دعا میکنم این قدم رو برداری اگر مسیح ما نیوردی به مسیح امروز ایمان بیار قلبت اول عوض میشه زندگی عوض میشه و بعد خودت عامل عوض شدن دیگران هستی دعا میکنم برکت خدا آرامش خداوند حضور خدا در تو در خانواده تو باشه و به وسیله من و تو ایران تبدیل بشه شما رو به خداوند میسپارم از مهمون عزیزمونم تشکر میکنم thank you so much appreciate it wonderful very good.